I just have the M42 in the field of view of this uh, uh, Skywatcher Max Vision um, uh, 150 Max sort of using the Max Vision uh, 68 degree 34 um, millimeter eyepiece. View is excellent, first class. I can easily split the trapezium in the heart of the M42. At the same time, I just want to tell you that the difference between this Max Vision uh, and uh, this IPS LET, which came with the Skywatcher telescope, is between s splitting the trapezium, clearly seeing it pinpoint stars, and not seeing it at all, or seeing something more like a, a lump of uh, fuzzy um, light. I can say, look look at the outward position I put the telescope mount. This is the Absonium one from the Heritage 130. And this is rock solid. I put it in a very awkward position. I've tapped it, did everything to it. No, not much uh, shaking on the image. I cannot show it because this camera is not very sensitive to show the dim light of the, tele of the um, M42. But that is amazing. I'm surprised how clear and how stable is this mount for this Maxis of Telescope. And when I was looking to, to the Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, of course not in the space, and this was tr because it was very low from the British Isle, uh, it was passing through the, the light of it was passing through the branches of the trees. It was like a batting of disc, and as a batting of disc, <laughs> you can use it for focusing, and I exactly used that for this purpose. It was like a batting of disc, I could see the patterns of the star changing according when I reached the focus or went a little out of the focus and then back into the focus. That was amazing. And I can say this is a beautiful, you can use it for visual astronomy, um, the Maxitoff one, with this eyepiece, wide-angle eyepiece. I'm in later because this this version can use the corrector reducer for the uh, Schmidt Cassie greens. I may just use this for here before the optical train here in the between the mirror and the optical train and uh, see if I can actually make the camera more wide angle than what it is. We will see if I can do that. I may not be able, it may not work, but let, let's hope. This is a Skywatcher SkyMax 150mm uh, Maxatov telescope. Uh, it's around 7 kilogram with the diagonal eyepiece and the uh, finder. This finder I've added of my own. And uh, it's a right angle finder, so easy to look at. But the problem with this uh, telescope and everywhere I have seen is that they say that it needs a very robust heavier mount like EQ5 or above. I tried, I read in one of the uh, astronomy uh, forums that actually you can use the tripod for a sky watcher uh, flex tube uh, the Absonian mount I'll show you the telescope itself uh, the box of it you will remember that's the telescope I'm referring to and for the International Year of Astronomy 2009 a special edition this Dapsonian mount here that you can see at the center is the one I'm using I must say it looks quite impressive on this mount and uh, the only worry is that uh, will it actually take a long time to dampen the vibrations that uh, happen when you touch the telescope or a mount or can it do it quick enough in under four minutes four seconds sorry okay as you can see i can turn the mount can move the tube up and down. It's quite a heavy beast. Uh, it's beautiful. And um, 
Yeah. I may have found the solution for this. Uh, the mount of this telescope. Uh, the, the thing is that when you have a telescope, a heavyweight, anything, at a height, that introduces vibration naturally. So if you get it lower, the vibration will be reduced. The height of it is less. So let's hope that this will work. Okay, this is the eyepiece that came with this telescope. It's lightweight, but it's two inch. So the good thing about this also is that this is two inch. The barrel and the diagonal. So let me install it and see how it is. The the eyepiece is lightweight. This one is lightweight. I have heavier than that, with half a kilo or more. So it's better to use a lightweight one just to see how it is. Okay, I've now installed the eyepiece, and uh, of course uh, I have to remove the lens cap, the front cap. Take a look here. The telescope is not balanced at this stage, so I'm going now to move it along so as to make it a little bit balanced. Okay, the eyepiece added some weight to it, so I had to balance it. I moved it slightly toward this direction, so the weight in this direction will be equal to the weight this direction. That's the fulcrum, uh, the center of the gravity, you can call it also. And hopefully, that will stay so I can move it up and down. And to the left and right. So let me target something. Um, actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed by the performance uh, at this stage. But this tube, as you know, Microsoft needs to be cooling down, to climatize, as they say. Uh, acclimatize. So, well, because this side of it is enclosed, there's a meniscus here. And this side of it is a mirror and the casing, and this side of it is a tube. Okay, this there is convection currents inside of it. Maybe is a different temperature to the outside environment until they reach the, the equilibrium, which takes around anything between one, half an hour to one hour. They will have some convection currents inside it. So what will happen is that you will see some turbulence, and it's a telescope, large telescope air turbulence will be magnified in whatever it is. So you have to let it cool down. But for the short period of time that I was able to actually video this, I was impressed. The vibrations you saw is not because of the vibration in the telescope's uh, air currents, but my hands shaking, moving, because this is a, um, a very, uh, not very wide angle lens, as you can see. The eye pupil is quite a small. And uh, so I'm impressed. What I'm impressed more than anything else is the focuser in this telescope, how good it is, how smooth it is to turn it. So nice feeling in this. This looks almost like that 48-inch uh, uh, Palomar uh, Maxatov that they have there. They're using it. It's really quite respectful scientific instrument. And okay, I will invest eventually probably in one good mount for this, but at the moment that's that's perfect. That works with this Altazimut mount. And as a tabletop telescope, you cannot probably use it all the time inside the house because you will never get rich there. You know, you waste your energy, of course, you can see that. Uh, but for the short distance that I'm looking at that hedge, it actually was giving me a good view. And of course, if there isn't a moon or anything outside, I can watch with this. So far, so good. Uh, solution for a big problem found. Uh, <laughs> a cheap Dobsonian mount will do the job. Okay, I've now installed my Max Vision uh, 68 degrees 34 millimeter uh, eyepiece. It has a very wide uh, viewing angle. I was really impressed with the image quality on this one. I'm holding the camera. I'm looking forward. That shows the difference between a cheap eyepiece and a good quality eyepiece.
think I will use the Max Vision with this. It goes better, it gives a better result. Looks heavier, adds at least uh, <laughs> half a kilo to the weight. But what the heck, that's a good, good, good telescope, needs good eyepiece. The telescope is as, is as good as his eyepiece and mount and optical and collimation and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mad hobby. <laughs> and as an extra measure, I lower the tube. So it will not touch, but just be close enough to the bottom of the base of the Dobsonian mount. We will see how it will all done. So far, so good. It's a big... Uh, scientific instrument. Let's see what's this telescope. Oh, it's reverse. And as an extra measure, I lower the tube. So it will not touch, but just be close enough to the bottom of the base of the Dobsonian mount. We will see how it will all done. So far, so good. It's a big uh, scientific instrument. Let's see what's this telescope. Oh, it's reverse.